Good evening, I'm Brian Reagan. This is Tyler Galley. And uh, we welcome you to our Twilight Talks on Abraham. Tonight we are in Genesis 21, 8 through 21. Tyler. So the child grew and was weaned, and Abraham made a great feast on the same day that Isaac was weaned. And Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, whom she had born to Abraham, scoffing. Therefore she said to Abraham, Cast out this bondwoman and her son, for the son of this bondwoman shall not be heir with my son, namely with Isaac. And the matter was very displeasing in Abraham's sight because of his son. But God said to Abraham, Do not let it be displeasing in your sight because of the lad or because of your bondwoman. Whatever Sarah has said to you, listen to her voice, for in Isaac your seed shall be called. Yet I will also make a nation of the son of the bondwoman because he is your seed. So Abraham rose early in the morning and took bread and a skin of water and putting it on her shoulder, he gave it and the boy to Hagar and sent her away. Then she departed and wandered in the wilderness of Beersheba. And the water in the skin was used up, and she placed the boy under one of the shrubs. Then she went and sat down across from him at a distance of about a bow shot, for she said to herself, Let me not see the death of the boy. So she sat opposite him and lifted her voice and wept. And God heard the voice of the lad. Then the angel of God called to Hagar out of heaven and said to her, What ails you, Hagar? Fear not, for God has heard the voice of the lad where he is. Arise, lift up the lad, and hold him with your hand, for I will make him a great nation. Is that 1 through 20? Yeah. 1? 21, yeah. Okay. Then God opened her eyes, she saw, and she saw a well of water. And she went and filled the skin with water and gave the lad a drink. So God was with the lad, and he grew and dwelt in the wilderness and became an archer. He dwelt in the wilderness of Paran, and his mother took a wife for him from the land of Egypt. All right. So, um, a couple things going on here. You say, no, uh, we need to deal with the disposition of Ishmael because Ishmael is, uh, he's obviously a son of Abraham. Um, he was uh, 13 when uh, he was circumcised. So he's in that 14, 15 range when Isaac is born. Um and we don't know how old Isaac was when he was weaned. I've listened to a lot of people over the years. Oh, you wean a child at about a year and a half, two years. What a, no, you know what? You wean a child when the mother's ready to be done nursing is what I've kind of seen over the years. Um, years ago, Tyler, uh, you know, because in America they've had, you know, the great breastfeeding debate. And one of the questions they always, how old, you know, till you wean them? And, you know, and, and they had mothers in that magazine article. Uh, you say, no, I didn't read the article. Catherine, Catherine read the article and she gave me the highlights of it. But there were women that anywhere between 12 months and 12 years old um, that mothers, you know, had weaned children. And she and I both looked at each other like, what? If you're old enough to do all that stuff that a 12-year-old can do, um, yeah, no, you should have weaned them, like, by kindergarten, probably. And and I've always kind of figured, you know, Isaac was probably somewhere between three and five. Um, this was Sarah's opportunity. I don't think she was like, oh, yay, all right. He's big enough. He can take a sippy cup. He can take a, a sippy goat skin. Um you know, get this kid off of my, you know, I don't want to breastfeed anymore. No, no, no. I think he was probably between three and five. He said, well, that would make Ishmael somewhere between 17 and 20. So why is Ishmael's mother whatever? First of all, I know Ishmael had to know how to take care of himself. I don't see Abraham raising him to not be kind of a sturdy, self-reliant kind of kid. I just, I don't, um, number one. Number two, <sighs> parents um, are nuts sometimes. You know, <gasps> my little Timmy, he's going to school eight miles away from the house to the university and he's going to live on campus. It cost us $20,000 more a year than he needs to. But I'm fine with that, but I'm losing my baby. I've heard men and women both say that. Seriously, he's eight miles away. 
Seriously, he's living in climate control. But you're calling him your little baby at 18. And you're crying your eyes out, wondering how he's going to make it in the world. When you paid for his uh, dining uh, expenses along with his dorm room. So you know he's guaranteed three meals a day. Why don't so don't look at Hagar and go, how come she behaved this way? You know people. Maybe you are one of them. It's a little bit different when your kid joins the military and he signed up for infantry, artillery, and tanks as his three job choices, and all three of those are combat. And he's like, I'm praying for a war, Mom, Dad. At 18, I want to go to war and be the baddest dude on the planet. Yeah, okay, if you cry then because your kid gets shipped to basic training, okay, I kind of get that. You know, my baby's going, yeah, I get that. The simple point is, Ishmael is always her baby. And, and when you look at the wording, it's clear. When the Lord says, you know, go and lift the lad up and take him by the hand for I will make it. It's The Lord isn't going, Hagar, go over and pick him up in your arms as a little baby and snuggle him. No. Go, go pick him up, Hagar. Ishmael's not a bad kid. You know, the number of people... Ishmael and Isaac, they couldn't... Ishmael and Isaac got along fine once they grew up. You have a teenage boy with a toddler little brother. And he's making sport at him and poking fun at him and being a teenage boy. And you say, well, the New Testament says he persecuted him. He probably did. <laughs> That's what happens sometimes. <laughs> But it was creating a rivalry between Sarah and Hagar, too. Their two boys was creating other issues. So Sarah says they've got to go. And Abraham's like, man, I just want to, I want to have both my boys here. And the Lord's like, because if Ishmael is somewhere between 17 and 20 years old, I know in today's America, we think a 17-year-old can barely tie their shoes and go drive a vehicle to school. But my grandfather's generation, a 17-year-old, could work a ranch, build a house, milk the cows, slaughter the hogs, and harvest 100 acres all before 7 in the morning. You say, that's an exaggeration. Not by much. So don't judge their world and their capabilities by our world. Two generations ago, three, it'd be three for Tyler. Three generations ago now for Tyler, his great-grandfather's generation. Man, at 12, what those guys and gals could do at 12 and 13. There's people 50 years old can't couldn't hang with them and hack with what a 12 and 13-year-old could do. 80 years ago in this country. It's just the truth. So, you know, Ishmael more than capable. But look at God's faithfulness. God made a promise to Abraham and pronounced a blessing on him. Ishmael's from his lineage. And God promises Abraham, don't you worry about Ishmael. I'll make him a great nation too. Hagar gets Ishmael a wife from Egypt, because where did she come from? Egypt. Egypt. What's the tie-in between the nation of Israel and Egypt? Man, those two, they're, they're inseparable. Egypt and Israel, I'm just telling you, that's one set of politics that everybody in the world needs to stay out of. Because they're connected all, they're, both those nations are connected through Abraham in ways that go back 4,000, 5,000 years. However far back you think Abraham was, I think probably around the year 2200, give or take. A lot of stuff. Anything you want to throw on this one? No, sir. When you were 12, could you have gone 
plowed a field, slaughtered the hog, built the house, and uh, still gotten ready to, you know, go to school in the sixth grade. Up hill in the snowboard place. And then gone to work in the afternoon to make more money to take care of your family. Could you have done that when you were 12? Mm, probably not. Probably not. Can you do it now? Don't answer that. I don't think you've ever slaughtered an animal for food. Nope. Okay. Point being, and I'm not picking on Tyler. Tyler's a pretty good guy. I like him. I don't know that I can do what my grandfather could have done. And I can do more than most people my age. And I know that I couldn't have gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with my granddad at the same age. So that's why I'm saying don't judge their world by how you were raised in our world. They were tougher. I mean, honestly, they, they were tougher back then. So Sunday morning. 9.30 for Bible class, 10.30 for worship, live or online. Live in or person. in person, live stream or in person. Lake Butler Church of Christ, Lake Butler, Florida. We hope to see you then.